Today, we are talking about the 2022 offensive recruits. We are going to cover all the prospects relevant to Texas's recruiting board. All of those big offensive names you've been wondering about are included. Devon Campbell, Kevin Coleman, Kelvin Banks, Evan Stewart, and a whole lot more. I need someone who knows recruiting like the back of their hand. So I brought on Eric Nolan from Inside Texas to give us the scoop. We cover all the names to watch for and their evaluations by the end of the video. You'll know exactly how this class is shaping up and what to look for in the coming months as things become more competitive. I chose Inside Texas as my source on all things Texas football and recruiting for a reason. Their inside information is of the highest quality. The cool thing is Inside Texas is offering a free premium account until the spring game on April 24th. It's an awesome chance to see the value they create daily for free. I urge you to head over to Inside Texas today to sign up. Link in the description. As you know, this video is sponsored by Last Stand Hats. They are all over social and they have tons of hat designs and different hat styles, all officially licensed by the University of Texas. Use promo code TEXASHOMER, all caps, for 10% off your hat purchase at laststandhats.com. Link in the description. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so I can keep bringing you bigger and better Texas Longhorns content. If you like what you see, then consider joining as a channel member for exclusive perks. It's time to move position group by position group, name after name, so we can get a full understanding of the potential 2022 recruiting class on offense. The 22 defensive recruits video is releasing very soon after. Without further ado, let's get into it. Thanks for stopping by to talk 22 recruits. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. Appreciate it. Uh, can't wait to get to it. Obviously, with the Sarkeesian's background, uh, there's a lot to get to. Flood's a hell of a recruiter, too, so it should be a fun installment. Let's kick it off with the quarterbacks in the 22 class. First up, we have commit Malik Murphy out of Cali. What's the current Malik evaluation after his first few games this year? Malik is going to have a long way to go as a passer. Uh, you know, he's lacking experience, lacking reps under fire. Uh, he's not lacking reps, of course, in the camp setting, but but all that does is set a baseline for your mechanics. Um, under live fire, you need to you need to be able to uh, return back to your your training, and he hasn't he hasn't had enough of that. Where it's it's committed to muscle memory in a, in a game type atmosphere. Uh, he needs to quicken everything. Basically, um, his his arm action is too long. His feet aren't quick enough. Even though he has the potential to have a faster uh, action and quicker feet, uh, we're not seeing that in game settings. And that's that. Well, part of that is you know he's got a very poor offensive line. Uh, Sarah has had much better teams in the past than they have right now. Uh, he's not getting help, whether it's with wide receivers or offensive line. Uh, so, so you have to factor into that. But yeah, he's, he's a bigger project than, than people uh, originally thought. Um, I think that original five-star composite ranking was more on uh, upside that, you know, the upside is still there, uh, but the floor isn't quite what you would want from a, a high four-star or composite five. Thanks for the honest evaluation, dude. It's crucial to know exactly where we're at. So Malik has to keep building up his mechanics, but he's been straight up awesome as a class leader on Twitter. So how has Malik benefited us in recruiting? Yeah, well, I mean, he seems like a great kid. I don't know him well, obviously, of him, him being a Southern Californian, uh, but he shows the intangibles of leadership. Uh, he's charismatic, which you want, you know, that you want guys to follow you. Um, he, he does have that, you know, I mean, you can tell that he's infectious from a, a long ways away. Out here in Texas, we can tell with that big smile. In the end, you have to produce on the field, and he's going to have a long way to go to do that. But but I think he does have a lot of the, the traits, not just the, the strong arm and, and the potential to be a good quarterback, but he has the potential to be a very good leader as well. As far as Sark's offensive system, how does he project into year three and four? Is he a match for what Sark's looking for? Yeah, as far as Sark's system, you know, you're going to want quicker feet and quicker action, uh, especially in the RPO game. That kind of, uh, you know, that that opens up the rest of the offense. Of course, you know, he could be an awesome, awesome quarterback in a, in a play action offense, you know, especially if you have a good running game. Then, you know, you bring everybody in and just throw it over the top. He's got the arm to do that for sure. Do you, is he going to be a one read quarterback? Uh, you can win with that. We saw Lincoln Riley win with that. Uh, Ohio State's won with that. You can definitely you can definitely win with it, but is he the total package? Is he a five star? That's a it's good. That's a long ways out from him becoming that. All right, cool man. That's the word on Malik. It was a ceiling evaluation, and the good news is is it's still a ceiling evaluation, and that remains intact. He's just got to keep working, and we'll get to see him a little bit later on. Is that it? Are we done hunting down quarterbacks? What's old Quinn Ewers up to? Well, let's say you had no inside information at all, and you barely followed recruiting, but you knew that the number one quarterback in the nation was in Dallas. Uh, and he grew up a fan of your school. Logic dictates that, that Texas would keep recruiting that guy. You know, obviously, we don't really blow that recruitment up. We don't talk about it a whole lot. 
uh, we're respecting everybody's privacy. Um, but it would be foolish to think that Texas isn't recruiting him or keeping those lines of communication open uh, in the event he does decide to look away from from Ohio State. You know, that's a kid that was tailor made to go to Texas. Um, it was his chosen school every bit as much as uh, Sam Ellinger and Hudson Card. You know, factors outside of his control uh, resulted him in, in decommitting. He made a probably a wise business decision to decommit, probably committed to Ohio State a little sooner than he should have, but he didn't know that Sarkeesian was going to get the job. And he did have a he did have a strong relationship with Steve Sarkeesian uh, for the past year before uh, Sark even got to Texas. And what allows Quinn to be the number one quarterback in the entire class? You know, he has those gym rat traits. He loves the chalkboard. He loves the classroom. He's a student of the game. You know, most people will start with the physical attributes when it comes to a quarterback, but I think it's the softer things that, that lead to successful quarterbacks. Of course, he has a big arm, great release, natural release. Um, the guy makes college throws in high school, which makes it you know even tougher to defend. Uh, but, the, but it all starts with his love for the game, the fact that he spends a lot of hours learning it. He doesn't want to be ready to go to the NFL. He wants to be ready to play in the NFL. So he's looking for a scheme that, that's going to be more advanced and that he's going to grow and it's going to force him to grow. Um, this is not a guy who wants to go into a simple offense uh, and just chuck it around. He wants to understand how to read defenses. Um, he wants to he wants to beat teams with his mind as much as his physical gifts. One of the traits I always hear about Quinn from the scouts is his anticipation, and that's due to his mental acuity you were just referencing. Is that the trait that makes him a cut above the rest in this class? Yeah, that anti- that anticipation in the arm is is going to <laughs> – that's what I'm saying, where he's making college throws that high school kids don't even think about. Um, you know, anticipation and accuracy are the two two most important uh, uh, traits when it comes to a quarterback. Um, so everybody falls in love with a strong arm. We saw that with Malik. But really it's about anticipation and accuracy. You know, if you can see the play develop and then get the ball where it needs to go, that's that's key. You know, Joe Montana didn't have a strong arm. And I want to circle around back to Malik because I'm still super excited about him. Uh, what does Malik do besides his big arm to stand out? Yeah, well, I think the guy has a lot of self-awareness, and I think that he knows that he has some things to fix, but I think he's also very competitive. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to shy away from competition no matter no matter who, who's on the roster. I don't think – I think he, that awareness will lead him to be not in a, not in a huge rush uh, to, to, to feel the need to see the field. I think he'll give the coaches the benefit of the doubt and let them develop them. Uh, trust the coaches, you know. The – Tua Tagovailoa and, and Mac Jones were in the same class together. It worked out great for both of them. I think he has that type of uh, forward vision and, and the, the patience and, and the self-awareness to realize that that might be the best route for him. And the future is bright there as well. Now it's time to get into the 22 running backs Texas have interest in. First up, we have our running back commit in Jaden Blue out of Houston. What makes Jaden the top running back in Texas? Yeah, first of all, that was a fantastic uh, evaluation, early evaluation by Stan Drayton. Uh, he keyed in on him very early, built a relationship, and really got Texas out to a great head start. Uh, he saw things that I didn't necessarily see right off the bat, uh, but then became much more obvious over time. Uh, he's got great feet, great agility, uh, great vision. Obviously, he's got long speed. He's probably a 10-6 guy. Uh, I don't know if he's had that has that on record yet. I think he has 10-7. That's official. Uh, so that's that's a lot of speed for a running back. You know, he's a home run threat. He's got the uh, he's got the feet and the agility and the vision. And then the burst to get there. And then what really sets him apart from most is he's got wide receiver hands. He can you can put him out in the slot. You can get very uh, creative with him. He's really a dual threat that way. So, you know, the guy could be a college wide receiver if you wanted to be is that good. So with the Jaden Blue commit, we're still looking to fill our second running back spot in the class. There's a few names to look at. First, let's take a look at Tavoris Jones out of El Paso. Yeah, Tavoris is the guy that was really high on the uh, – the previous staff, he, he nearly committed to Texas last summer. Uh, another guy that was uh, evaluated really early by Stan Drayton. And when you do that, when you make those early evaluations, you give yourself a head start. Uh, everybody else is playing catch up to you. Uh, Texas has kind of circled back and really re-engaged to Boris. Uh, things are looking real good for him. He's going to visit uh, the, big, uh, the big June weekend, uh, 18th through 20th, I believe. You know, what I like about him is he's got great bursts. You know, um, long speed is kind of like arm strength. Uh, it's overrated to a degree. Of course you want it. You know, that, that's great. It's a plus. You want it. You can use it to your advantage. But really, you got to be you got to have burst. You got to be quick to and through the hole. Um, you know, if you can't see the hole and if you can't get there, that long speed doesn't do you any good. Uh, it's kind of like if you're inaccurate and have a very strong arm. Uh, but but Tavoris has that burst. Uh, I think he's still pretty raw in some ways. I like it. You know, like I think, uh, you know, uh, Jamal Charles wasn't the most refined running back coming out. Uh, but he could beat you with speed. Uh, I think Tavoris has some of that too. I'm not saying he's to Jamal, so don't even don't even get me started there. But I'm just saying Jamal would, Jamal might carry the ball in the wrong hand and, ta- and house it for 80 yards. You know, 
I think divorce has some of that just get it done athleticism. And there's still a couple names to look at. So what's the word on Jamarian Miller from Tyler? Big fan of Jamarian. I think he's uh, I think he's pretty close to Jaden Blue in quality. Actually, that's how high I am on him. Uh, he's got that four five speed. That's legit laser speed. This isn't his coach telling you. He's got the he's got the speed. He's got the agility. He can make you miss in a phone booth. I think he's probably the hardest to tackle of the bunch once you factor in for the fact that he's uh, he's incredibly tough in close quarters. Uh, he can get small and then he can get the corner and take it to the house, too. He also has good hands as well. So he's versatile. Um, I don't think he's going to end up in the Texas class. I think it's probably going to be to Boris Jones. And, you know, tomorrow it's going to be a really good running back, maybe, a, you know, an Oklahoma State type. You know, I could see them getting a steal like that. Uh, but that kid could play at any, any place in the, any uh, school in the country. Cool, man. And there's another back in Trevante Citizen out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Is this an LSU lock? Stan Drayton loves Trevante. Stan has him uh, rated as maybe the top running back in the nation outside of Jaden Blue. Uh, so that tells you uh, how high Texas is. It's just, you know, going into Louisiana and getting a guy that LSU wants, is it's always going to be difficult even when they're down and, and almost out. It's, at least his perception is in, in some parts of the country. Um, you know, I'm not betting on Texas winning that. Also, I'm not really seeing that Stan Drake eval myself. I, um, I don't think he runs with as much power as he should. I don't think he's quite as explosive. But, um, you know, he's a good running back. I just think he's probably going to end up at LSU. All right, man. Well, when it's all said and done, which running back actually fills our number two slot? Most likely would be Tavoris Jones. And I don't think that that recruitment will get past the summer. You know, maybe maybe you even see some activity there in June. Uh, I think he's going to be uh, ready to shut things down a little earlier than the others. Um, and, you know, why, why wait around? The kid's good. He's talented. Uh, don't overthink it. Good stuff, man. And that's a wrap on the 22 running backs. And now it's time for the offensive line. Fans are super curious about our O-line recruiting and for good reason. Let's jump right into it with our top target in Devon Campbell. Let's cut to the chase. Are we going to get him? Oh, man, I mean, I've, I've, th I've thought Texas is going to get him for a year now. Um, you know, I, I just I just think the kid profiles to the school. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, the coaches have to do their part, but sometimes you can just see the kid being a good fit for the school, and I think that's where Campbell is. But, you know, on top of it, uh, bringing in Flood and, and Sarkeesian from Alabama who are recruiting him already, that was a huge plus. He was very excited about that. I know that uh, I talked to his uncle not long after that, and uh, he relayed how, how excited uh, Devon was for that. So um, I, I like Texas's uh, positioning there. Uh, I don't see much changing on that. Uh, recruiting, can always, things can always change in recruiting, uh, but that's one that I feel, I feel really good about UT's chances on that one. What makes Devon the number one guard in the nation? As the number one guard in the nation, you, you know, the first thing you're going to have to have is some sort of athleticism that sets you apart. You can't just be a big guy that, that uh, is a road grader. You know, to me, I, I don't I don't I'm not even sure I view him as a guard anymore because he's got such uh, long arms. I, I could see him being a right tackle because he has that sort of uh, athleticism. And, you know, I saw his uh, the first highlight I saw of him where he was pulling around the edge and like, man, this guy could play defensive tackle if he wanted to. He's that type of athlete. So. Um, I think people are kind of caught up on him being a guard because he's maybe six, three and change. Uh, I don't know. I, I could see him being a right tackle to me. It's kind of like getting another bite of the apple of Darius James. If people remember him from the 2013 class, just a, just an exceptional athlete. I would say about Darius that he get up and moving like he had ants in his uh, sleeping bag. And that's how, uh, <laughs> that's how Devon gets up and moving, man. They're those guys, you don't want to stand in front of them, but they have the, uh, they have those dancing bear traits where I, I think that uh, I think he could be a right tackle if they needed him to be. Devon would be a giant get. And Texas is also in the hunt for Kelvin Banks, a super athletic tackle out on Humble, Texas, and another composite five-star. So why is Kelvin a special player? Yeah, so I mean, this, what makes him special is he's a left tackle. Uh, you know, he's got the bend, the footwork, uh, all those things that they look for is, you know, the, the, he's not stiff anywhere. He's super quick. He can get out on, on the move as well. Um, just body quickness from head to toe. It's a huge, uh, huge part of being able to mirror versus uh, quicker defensive ends. Uh, he has that. So I see him as a left tackle. Some might quibble with that and say he's a right tackle, but I, I'm pretty confident that he's going to be a left tackle after a few years in college. Uh, so yeah, it's, you know, pure left tackles are hard to find. It's like a cornerback that doesn't need any safety help like Denver Harris. You know, those guys are rare uh, and that boosts their profile makes them Makes them uh, the more rare they are, you know, it's just supply and demand and scarcity. He's, you know, I can see why he's a five star because he's he really is a left tackle. How is the recruitment of Kelvin Banks going? It's going well. Uh, Texas had a good shot early on. He committed to Oklahoma State. And they they kind of backed off a little bit, um, but you know, I think Texas was always the dream school. Uh, they did fall off for a while there. 
Uh, obviously, you know, Texas fell off with a lot of offensive linemen there. Uh, but, you know, they made up ground quickly. You know, when, when a kid has a preference initially uh, in, in that school, uh, loses traction, there's always a chance for a rebound if, if, if the variables change. And obviously some significant variables changed with the, the new coaching staff and, and Texas made up ground quickly. I, you know, to me, he's always been, uh, been a kid that profiles to stay closer to home. Uh, Texas is going to have that advantage with Houston kids. Uh, you know, A&M has that advantage with some as well. Uh, but this one just looks like it's probably going to swing in UT's uh, direction. Uh, though A&M is a threat and LSU is a, is, is a bit of a secondary threat, I would say. But right now it's, it's Texas versus Texas A&M. And, um, you know, I, I think I just go back to my first read on that kid where Texas, uh, Texas is the most likely school. Well, that was nice to hear. The third most common name is offensive tackle Cam Dewberry out of Humble, Texas as well. What makes you key in when you watch Cam play? I see a very, very, very high floor. Um, you know, if, if somebody asked me, you know, give me three guys that you're most certain of make it to the NFL, I think uh, Cam Dewberry is probably one of my three. Um, I, you know, I don't know if he's going to be a tackle or a guard in the NFL. He definitely has the arm length for a tackle. Uh, but I just think that, that the kid has so many good things going for him. Uh, good feet, good base. Um, you know, he, he's, he's good in pass pro. He's good as a run blocker. Um, you know, that school's producing as well. You know, same with Kenyon Green and Sam Cosme. These are all NFL guys. So I think I think Cam is one as well. Uh, I'm a little biased. I met him when he was in the eighth grade, and I, <laughs> I couldn't believe he's an eighth grader. He's just always been a little advanced. Um, and I think that's going to keep extending on. And, and I think, uh, you know, if he keeps working, you know, there's going to be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's legit praise, man. How is Texas doing in Dewberry's recruitment? This is going to be a hard fought one. And, and, you know, fortunately for Texas and I guess every other school is it's going to play off for a long time. The season's going to matter. Um, you know, I was talking to his dad a while back and, and he made the point that it's, it's extremely competitive, not just with the schools, but with the offensive line coaches, you know, especially now that Texas has Kyle Flood. Um, you've got excellent offensive line line, line coaches uh, all, all throughout the region. Uh, ben Baugh at OU, uh, Josh Henson at AM is a guy I've, I've uh, respected for a very long time. Uh, Craig at LSU gets it done too. Um, so, you know, not only are these schools good, you know, you can make a case to go to the school on itself, but, but then you have you factor in the, the level of coaching. Um, I think Ohio state would be the wild card. Uh, they, they could probably go for the steal, except that distance might factor in. Um, this one's going to play out for, uh, for a long time. So, you know, the season's going to matter. You're making a prediction when the season matters is, is, is tough because, you know, who knows how the season's going to go. Um, I tend to think that he's going to end up at the school that does better in recruiting between UT and a and uh, And then you see a hotly contested December decision. And that one should be pretty fun to cover. So, all right, we got a battle on our hands with Camp Dewberry, but he's worth sticking it out for. Now let's turn to the hometown kid and Connor Robertson out of Westlake. What's the eval on Connor and how's UT doing in the race? I think Connor Robertson, the eval is, is uh, you know, just go watch Jake Majors at Prosper and you see a guy that has the feet and the quickness to play tackle, but not the lengths. So, you know, that sets a good floor, a good athletic floor for playing interior linemen and, and probably center uh, if they have the intelligence. And, uh, you know, both of those guys had Stanford offers. That tells you all you need to know about, about intelligence. I didn't have that offer. I don't know about you, uh, Homer. But, uh, you know, Stanford wasn't beating down my door. Uh, so the guy could play center for sure. So that, you know, that, that, that to me uh, makes him more intriguing. It increases his value. Uh, like I said, he does have that sort of tackle quickness, um, but not the length that you're looking for. Um, so yeah, he's a really good prospect underrated. Some of these guys get short, short shrift, uh, you know, happened to James Brockermeyer too. Everybody was like, Oh, James is just, you know, Tommy's younger brother. Now James is a kick-ass center prospect. I think Connor's pretty damn good too. Another name is Cole Hudson out of Frisco. So what has he done to catch the eye of multiple big name schools? So to me, Cole reminds me a little of Hayden Connor. He's just a massive dude, probably a guard, but there's just enough there to intrigue you to, to maybe try him out at tackle at first, but but, you know, guard is probably his home long term. Um, you know, I don't know that he's going to be center. He's so big. I just don't know that he quite have the quickness to snap and get off the ball and reach a guy. Um, but, yeah, I think he has a really high floor as a, as a guard. He, he moves very well, too. You know, so I don't want to short, short shrift him either. You know, he's not he's not Devon Campbell, but the guy can move. So I really like him. I think he's an excellent prospect. I've been high on him, you know, for a long time. Problem there uh, that Texas might have is. You know, can they fit both uh, Connor Robertson and Cole Hudson in the class? You know, let's just say that they both wanted to come. Is, is it doable? Is it feasible given the numbers? You know, there's always number constraints. Uh, we, aren't, we aren't in the 60s anymore when you can take a 100-man class. 
so these, in some ways, a lot of these uh, recruitments uh, affect each other, uh, and we'll see how that plays out. You know, first Texas has to get them wanting to say yes. Uh, you know, I think they have a decent chance for both. Connor may be looking to take some visits out of state just to get the experience, and then Cole. Uh, Cole seems a little bit uh, torn between Texas and OU. June is going to be a very big month for him as he visits both schools, and I think A&M is sneaking into the picture too a little bit. The Texas OU A&M battle is always my favorite. We have another big name out of Allen, Texas, and Neto Umiazulu. I've heard that we have no shot there. So what's the eval on Neto, and is he realistic at all? Neto Umiazulu, man. I love this guy's tape. Uh, I think there's enough there with uh, some good strength and conditioning that you know, you, you maybe even be a left tackle, a right tackle for sure. Great run blocker. Um, if he goes to the interior, then he's just going to be a complete prospect, and you know, I, I just can't see him not make it to the NFL. Uh, you know, Sometimes you can just see it with these kids. Uh, he's got tons of upside. We're very high on him at Inside Texas, have been for a while. Uh, kid could play anywhere in the country. Going to be very tough to pull for all the regional schools. You know, um, uh, Chad, Chad Morris just was named the uh, coach at, at uh, Allen. I'm not saying Chad's going to gonna put a stick in the spokes for any other school, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is he going to let him go? To, is, is he going to say anything good about OU? Uh, you know, what about Texas? I, I think uh, – I think it's going to be tough for the regional schools to pull. I could see, I could see Alabama going for the steal there. Um, but you know, Umil Zulu is a, a beast, man. He's 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 right there with Banks and uh, and Campbell, as far as I'm concerned. Going to be a tough one. Uh, Texas is definitely going to have to win win over the parents. Uh, when the parents are very, uh, when the when the parents are outspoken about the the importance of education, and it's not the kid kid kid. It's usually lip service. Uh, when the parents say it, mean it. Uh, UT is going to have a chance. So that's that's probably where you're going to hang your hat on and, and try to get in the get your foot in the door through academics. Come on, academics. That's a wrap for the in-state guys, but we have several out-of-state O-linemen we are also looking at. So first up, we have Josh Connerly Jr. out of Seattle. So what do we know about Josh? Connerly is enticing because he's another guy with left tackle upside. You know, you, you always move those guys up a notch. Uh, left tackles, corners, defensive ends, and quarterbacks. So that left tackle upside, you know, he's got fun, fun tape of him playing East Side Catholic, which is a which is a good good Pacific Northwest school uh, playing defensive tackle. Uh, but he's got that left tackle upside, and, and you know that's 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 the scarcity we were talking about. You know, without the out of state school, uh, out of state kids, and I, I, you know, I always pay attention to them, but you don't care until they actually get to campus. Their, their recruitments don't get real until they get to camp, campus. Sometimes, you know, nowadays with the the amount these kids travel, you really have to get him to campus a couple times. So we've heard that there's a good chance he's going to be in line for a visit, maybe an official visit, and then things will pick up at, at that point. Uh, but until then, it's just it's just too hard to know where, where that guy's leaning. Uh, but they definitely need more lines in the water for tackles. Tackles, more priority over guard, especially with the way the roster's made up right now. Um, so, you know, him being a tackle, you're going to stay on him until the very end. Then we have Ernest Green out of Cali. What is Texas seeing in Green? Green is guard specific, sort of like Hudson. Uh, you know, sometimes that's a turnoff, but when they're as good as him, you know, you go all in for them. Uh, you know, when they're that good, you, you just get them in and, and you maul people and, <laughs> and you make everybody's life easier by running behind them. Um, so, you know, the big problem is, you know, the big issue is can you get that kid out of Southern California? Uh, Texas has done a, a decent job of, of getting guys out of there. If you, if you find those guys, I like I like those guys with the right profile. You know, those some of those kids are, you know, they're tired of seeing the water polo guy get the girls. They want to go out where football's king, and, and, and they're the big man on campus. And some of those guys like Chris Adam Moore, that was what appealed to him is, you know, they, get, they want to be in a football serious environment. Um, not that USC isn't. Obviously, they've got a rich tradition. But, uh, you know, Texas, Texas can sell that to, the, to these kids. So, you know, if Malik Mur Murphy uh, continues to be a great ambassador for the class, you never know what's going to happen. But first things first, get the kid to campus. Yeah, dude, we got to keep beefing up those Cali ties. We are more relevant in Cali than we have been in a long time, basically, because all of our coaches are from the West Coast. But let's head over to Cherry Creek in Inglewood, Colorado, to check out George Fitzpatrick. That's the same school we just pulled our new tight end, Gunnar Helm, from. Fitzpatrick's very intriguing to me. Again, uh, probably enough uh, quickness and, and footwork there to, to be a left tackle. Uh, yeah, I, I saw him last year uh, when I was uh, just going over the Cherry Creek roster and uh, after they offered Gunnar Helm, Gunnar Helm's turning heads already, by the way. So, uh, that, you know, that speaks well. I'm sure they're picking Gunnar, uh, Gunnar's brain about, about Fitzpatrick. Um, so, I'm, you know, they've done their homework there. Uh, they need to expand the net on tackles just because of the value of them. Uh, you you want to have, have optionality for as long as possible. 
so yeah, he's definitely worth the, uh, worth the offer. Of, you know, we've we've mentioned him on our Inside Texas, you know, probably seven eight months ago. He's, he's a talented player. Then we have Jacob Sexton out of Oklahoma. What's his evaluation, and do we have a shot at an actual Oklahoma kid? Yeah, it's it's tough to get excited about a kid that's in Oklahoma because you know, especially with uh, the way that Oklahoma's been turning out offensive linemen and and, uh, and, and winning seasons. Uh, but Sexton has reciprocated interest with Texas, um, and, and there's some people on the ground that don't think he's he's quite the lock uh, for OU that you might suggest. So you just keep trying to get him to campus, and maybe you can win him over, man. It's a you never know how a kid is wired to, to you know maybe he wants to leave home, you know, for whatever reason. I'm not saying that's the case here, but you take your shot. You always take your shot in recruiting. Uh, you know, as long as as long as you you know you have a chance, and you're not running anybody else off. So bring him in, man. He's a stud. How's Malik Ogbo out of Washington looking? Agbo's going to be a right tackle or a guard. Uh, I tend to think that he's going to be a guard long term. Uh, he's a big body kid. He wants to be a little bit on a, a longer cycle. He doesn't seem to be in a hurry. You know, it seems like he's he's very serious about doing his his, his due diligence. Um, you know, some of these kids, it's 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 a weird cycle. You've got the uh, bottleneck of of guys that would have uh, would have announced in the spring and then the summer kind of kind of bottlenecking right now. And then these guys that are on the longer cycle, yeah. You know, you know, you don't want to put him on the back burner. You have to stay on him, but he doesn't seem to be in a, in a big hurry. And, and that could work to Texas's advantage if they put together a good season. So him and Dewberry are two that I have uh, that I have on a, on a bit of a longer cycle. What's nice about Ogbo's game? He can maul. He's got a wide base. He can maul you. He's going to be a great run blocker. Uh, you know, probably even though he's big, you could probably still run outside zone with him as a uh, as a right tackle. I, I do think guard is probably a ceiling and, and that's a, that's a really high ceiling, you know, um, guards are a little underappreciated at times. Like I tend to do it too, just because they're not quite as rare, you know, a six, three, 320 pound guy isn't, isn't as rare as a six, five, you know, 305, uh, slim belly guy that can move. Uh, but you know, it's really good player. And, and, um, you know, I can definitely see how, how he would have fit fit what Alabama was doing. That's what really catches your eye when you see some of these guys. That, you know, they're land movers. And our final O line prospect is Alu Ba out of IMG in Florida. It's always tough to uh, pull a kid out of IMG uh, unless you're winning big or, or rooted down there in the Southeastern Conference. But Texas has a decent shot here. You know, get him to campus, uh, and then you know, are they going to push and go all in on him, or are they going to sit there and are they going to going to measure where they're at with everybody else and and and, and be a little bit more uh, patient. Uh, that's the big question there. I, I do think Texas has a good chance to get a loop off if they really push. Man, good stuff, brother. The O-line prospects are really looking excellent this year, but let's zoom out a little bit. What's the goal? What is Kyle Flood trying to do with his new classes? They have to go big. They have to be successful. It's very important. They have to hit a wide receiver and they have to hit an offensive line in this class. And I said that last year and they didn't. So it just made it even more important this year. Fortunately for Flood and, and Coleman, uh, the state is bountiful with talent at, at each position. Um, you know, there's a good chance to, there's a decent chance to, to land, um, you know, I won't say the perfect class, the top, the ideal top five that they want, but, but they're definitely in good standing with, with the priorities that we mentioned, Devon Campbell, Kelvin Banks, uh, Connor Robertson, or Cole Hudson, one of those two, and then stay and play in the long game for Cam Dewberry. Uh, Umi Azula is going to be tougher to pull, uh, and that's why you see them ex- uh, casting a wider net with some of these other tackles across the country. And then, of course, you know, they're still looking at some of those guards that are just too good. You just take them if you can get them. Uh, some of those, those Alabama type of guys that, you know, weigh 330 and, and, and lean on people and move them out of the way. First things first, land those in-state guys. So you could really get the ball moving if you could get Kelvin Banks and Devon Campbell in by the, by the end of summer. I'm super excited for the O-line commits coming up. And that's a wrap for the offensive line. So now let's take a look at the tight ends for this year. I'm hearing tight end isn't a big priority in this class. We took Jatavion last year. And we are already deep at the position. So do we even need a tight end in this class? Well, there's a lot of depth on our roster going back to our last conversation. We thought that uh, Texas was, uh, it might be the most uh, loaded position and it's certainly in the conversation. So that tells you that it might not be that big of a priority. You only play one or two at a time, unless you're Boise State and roll three out, up, out there. So yeah, it's, it, it, if you can get a good good player, you're going to do it, uh, but you're not going to force it. You're not going to rush it. There's no point. Uh, there's a lot of other needs, pressing needs elsewhere. Uh, so if you can get the right type of guy, then, then you go for it. But uh, if not, you don't, you don't want to take a reach, man. These, these spots are so valuable in the first class. So we actually do have a couple tight end prospects this year, regardless of the class need. So what's the word on Holden Stays out of Atlanta? Yeah, he was an early offer out of uh, Georgia for uh, for the staff. Uh, clearly, they liked him quite a bit when they were at Alabama. Jeff Banks offered him uh, not too long after he got to campus. 
uh, really good athlete. You can see him ripping the seam. Uh, and, you know, just a dangerous guy uh, with the ball in his hands. Seems to be pretty reliable too. Um, you know, obviously I have to get get bigger and stronger, all that. And those caveats almost always apply to tight ends. Uh, but he's a good athlete. I'm not sure how much he's worth watching. He has told Inside Texas that uh, in, uh, Texas is in the running for an official visit. He's another guy that, uh, you know, that, that works out. These longer timelines are actually good at that position because you want optionality uh, for as long as possible. Uh, so if, if he doesn't want to take an official visit till October, hey, that's fine. I'm also seeing an in-state kid out of Carrollton Creek View and Sean Salas. This is a super exciting player that's under the radar for the most part. Sometimes you see a guy that's just <laughs> too fast for the position. It doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, he's running 20, high 21s or low 22s in the 200 or something ridiculous for a tight end. He's a big kid, tall kid. I believe you've seen him in person as well. You know, 6'5", you know, 220 or so. Uh, and just that speed. So, yeah, he's, he could be a really, really big time matchup nightmare, uh, more of the flex type of uh, tight end that, that we've seen uh, seen them use some at the pat, in the past at, at Alabama, kind of in the mold of maybe a Malcolm Epps or a, a Braden Librock at Texas. You know, you do a full eval there. If, if you get a good feeling of that guy that he's going to uh, that he's going to to block his ass off, then, then the, the eval improves even more. And then you start looking at those 200 times and you, you might get an itchy trigger finger. You know, it's just an uncommon guy to see him running that fast. He's a fun watch, man. And that's the end of the long list of tight end prospects. So now it's time to dive into the receivers. This year's class of receivers is nuts. So first, let's talk about our wide receiver commit and Armani Winfield. How is Armani's commitment? Is he still solid? I do think Armani is is uh, relatively solid. You know, I don't know what how you quantify relatively solid, but I you know I, I think he's interested in taking visits and experiencing part of the process. But at the same time, he's he's very comfortable with his commitment to Texas. He, he loves what Texas does on offense. You know, he'd like Texas to school before the staff got there, and uh, you know he definitely noticed what happened in the national championship game. So I, I think that he's he's uh, he, he's he's bought in enough to where he's going to stay committed, but. Uh, at the same time, you know, he wants to do his homework and experience part of the process, and, and you can't really blame him. No, you can't. You got to do your research, man. And then uh, what are the scouts seeing in Armani? I think he, I think he recently timed electronically 459. I think he's always 459. He switches gears. Uh, it, it, he just has this acceleration, whether he's coming out of his uh, cuts or, or, uh, or, you know, you can see when the ball's in the air, there's just something else in the tank. Just, I think he's just a, a beautiful runner. You know, the big question there is why didn't he have more production uh, as a junior? He only had like 30 receptions and, you know, he tended to disappear at times. But uh, everything is there. Everything is there for him to be uh, an early round draft pick as far as I'm concerned. You know, he's, he's got he's got the skill set for it. He's got the uncommon uh, traits you need. Um, and I, I hear he's working really hard these days. Um, and and if, he, if he applies himself, man, he's got he's got unlimited potential, man. When. When the ball's in the air, it's, it's a beautiful sight to see him go get it. Cool. Let's move on to the 22 prospects that haven't committed. I'm hearing the name of Shaz Preston out of Louisiana a lot. Is he looking likely? Yeah, I wouldn't say he's looking likely. Of course not. He's, you know, he's in Louisiana and Alabama likes him. And, you know, it's his brothers at Mississippi State, and they tend to win a recruitment every now and then. But he does like Texas. He likes Sarkeesian. Obviously, again, you know, the, you know these, these guys aren't dumb. You know, they're, they're saying that, you know, Sarkeesian's going to have four wide receivers going the first round in, uh, in two years. So that, uh, that's, a, that's an attention getter for sure. Um, and that's, that's really what's helping Texas get their foot in the door with a lot of guys that they wouldn't otherwise. But, yeah, I think he profiles similar to some of those, those Alabama guys that, that, that could get open, hard to cover man, in man coverage, reliable hands, uh, that sort of thing. You know, he's going to be he's going to visit in, in June and that we need to hear really positive things uh, coming out of that visit for Texas to really become a player down the stretch. All right, so we're going to have to stay competitive with old Shaz, and that's cool. And now we're on to our long-lost love and Evan Stewart. ESPN marked him as the number one receiver a couple days ago. Do we have a realistic shot to get Evan back in the boat? The odds aren't in, in Texas' favor that he will come back in the class, but obviously, man, this, this, there's so many unique circumstances. You know, not, you know, when we say guys don't tend to end up back in the class, they're usually not in the middle of a pandemic. They usually didn't commit too early. Uh, they usually didn't decommit from a guy that put four wide receivers in, in the NFL in two years. Uh, so you just, you know, he just committed early, uh, you know, big deal. Try to make up for it and, and uh, you know, no, no, no hard feelings. At least that's how Texas should view it. So, you know, process starts anew. 
Um, the guys, you know, I think uh, our Jerry Hamilton thinks he's the best wide receiver in the nation. I, yeah, I mean, I could see that, you know, the kid's got an Olympian lower body, so it's hard to go against that. He knows how to go up and get the ball. He really attacks it. Yeah, I, I, Texas is going to stay in it, and, and Sarkeesian gives them a chance. You know, if, if the uh, offense can, uh, can put up some numbers, they, you know, throw the ball around. Not going to be the greatest environment for that. You know, you're going to probably lean on Bijan a little more than you are on the wide receivers with the newer, newer quarterbacks. But, you know, Sarkeesian's going to give them a chance. What really needs to happen is they just need to get this kid to campus and Sarkeesian needs to be able to connect with them. You know, if that authenticity that, 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 that the kids like about Sarkeesian comes to bear with Stewart, then Texas is going to be in it till the very end. Uh, but most importantly for Texas is what they have to do is they have to split aces. If you're in Vegas, you split aces. Uh, right now they need to split aces with uh, Alabama between uh, Evan Stewart and Kevin Coleman. So you're saying there's a chance. And also you mentioned Jordan Hudson, who's an OU commit out of Garland. So what's the word on Hudson? Jordan Hudson. To me, the best uh, wide receiver in the state. Uh, I mean, I just love, this, love his ball skills, love the way he attacks it. Um, you know, it reminds me of C.D. Lamb in some regard. Um, had C.D. Lamb number five in the state and when people had him in the 20s. Just love C.D. Lamb. I see a lot of the same things with Jordan. Similar, uh, similar attitude out on the field. He's committed to Oklahoma, of course. Been committed for a while. Uh, Texas is still trying. Previous staff was still trying. He's just exceptional. You never give up on a player like him. Uh, USC is slowly creeping into the into the conversation. Uh, Hudson Hudson's mother is, uh, is is pretty fond of of the idea of Texas. Uh, you know, but I, I, I he has to get to campus probably a couple times. There's a chance that he's going to uh, take an unofficial uh, and then also an official to Texas. And if they can get him to campus twice and connect with them, uh, you know, put them on, you know, put them in front of the uh, uh, the highlights of, of all these uh, water series that they've, they've had success with. And, you know, maybe there's a chance uh, there's definitely a real possibility of him flipping, uh, but I, I wouldn't necessarily predict it. We can't let OU get another CD lamb type. And I'm glad to hear we aren't conceding defeat with Hudson because he is a special player. So let's go over to modern day in California to eval CJ Williams. What's so nice about CJ? Excellent ball skills. Uh, short area quickness is good. Good route runner. You know, if you're the lead guy at modern day, you're going to put up numbers. It's just uh, one of the laws in life. You know, Texas has a good chance. Again, another one, you know, it's broken record. Uh, Sarkeesian gives them a chance with any wide receiver, really. Uh, so, you know, you got to get him to campus. Uh, he's pretty close with, uh, with Malik Murphy. Get him to campus. You know, you're going to have to win him over uh, between uh, Alabama, Notre Dame, and USC. So those are <laughs> – you know, he seems to be like a Notre Dame guy, like some of those guys that they've had there, St. Brown, kind of profiles like that. Uh, they always have one top guy that's really good. Uh, so you can sort of see uh, see him in, in in South Bend. You know, if Alabama really goes in after him, it's going to be make it even tougher. But I think Texas does have a very, uh, a, a very realistic shot for him. He fits the X receiver uh, where Troy O'Meary is going to be and where Colin Johnson had been. Sarkeesian, as we talked about last time, isn't so hung up on these uh, those perfect fits as Tom Herman was, but he really is a good fit for what you're looking for in the boundary receiver. Cool, man. I like CJ a lot. And we have another name in Brennan Thompson out of Spearman. This kid is super athletic, and I heard it's going to be an uphill battle. So what's the scoop there? Brennan's going to be an inside receiver, probably uh, one that you run a lot of vertical uh, stuff with. Uh, you know, of course, he has the breakaway speed. You know, I don't think he's quite hit that 10-3 that he hit last year but he's getting faster as the uh, track season goes on. Um, play speed is, is pretty evident on tape, regardless of track times. Just a really good player. You know, obviously he's a wide receiver to me, but type of athlete he is, he could be a defensive back. Just tells you a different type of athleticism that he has as well. Uh, Texas is going to be a player in that. Uh, you know, you've got to watch. Uh, you know, OU says that they're, uh, you know, the word out of uh, Norman is that OU probably doesn't have enough room for another wide receiver, but I'm still a little leery of that. Uh, he's he's uh, uh, been hearing more from A&M. Uh, they're taking uh, unofficial visits in, in the coming weeks. I believe he's going to be at Texas in June. Uh, and then, you know, we'll see how much that heats up. Uh, I, I, I could see Texas really making a push for him after losing Evan Stewart. You know, that's uh, you, you've got to fill that slot with some speed. They need they need a game breaker. They need they need some all out speed that has to be accounted for at all times. Uh, and while they're still working on Evan Stewart and Kevin Coleman, got to get a guy in the class and if, if they can get Brandon Thompson and that would, that would, that would definitely set the floor for that, that sort of uh, that need that the, the roster is lacking. Yeah, man, we need slot speed, like pure and simple. And I got to ask about the number one wide receiver in Cali and Tetrora McMillan. Is Texas hanging around that recruitment at all? 
Oh, you mean T-Mac? <laughs> yeah, uh, Tetsuro and McMillan. Yeah, the good thing about these names is they're easy to find on social media. You know, it's not like looking for Billy Smith. Growing up in California, you know, it's it's funny you see the uh, the uh, the popularity of these ridiculous sports, volleyball and water polo and stuff. But his water his his uh his volleyball game really shows up on the on the screen, man. He goes up, stabs the ball, gets off the ground quick like a rebounder. Uh, he just you know he attacks it. You know, I love the way the kid plays. He's got some got some burst to him. Um, he's really known as a uh, as a guy that's more of a target receiver, but I think he's a, he's better after the catch than than, than probably people realize. So the big problem is he's you know as you would expect from a volleyball player, he's probably going to stay on the West Coast. You know, probably go to Stanford or USC or maybe Oregon. I think Texas is going to make a make a serious push for that one. And now we have a fun name for the fans and a nice way to keep Ohio State honest. Caleb Burton's dad got a job in Austin, so everyone is keyed into that. I do not think this will happen, but for the sake of entertainment, does Burton's proximity give us the shot at a flip? I have no idea what's going to happen with Caleb Burton. You know, he seems very comfortable in his uh, Ohio State commitment. You know, I think the bigger issue is where he's going to end up going to high school. You know, some talk of uh, maybe Lake Travis or, or maybe Westlake. I'm not sure. It's unfortunate he had that knee injury last year. He's a fun receiver to watch. He's got he's got a lot of skill. He's a, maybe not a burner, but he still gets you deep. Um, you know, he's, he's pretty well rounded. Uh, you know, probably going to be just another one of those. I don't think I, I don't have him uh, as highly rated as Garrett Wilson, but it's you know it stings a little when these hometown guys go elsewhere. Part of me thinks that you know the final chapter on that one isn't entirely written, but Texas would probably need a couple things to to happen before that one gets interesting. Yeah, it seems like a non-factor to me as well at the moment. Another super exciting name is Kevin Coleman. He has game-breaking speed and elusiveness. So how are we doing in pulling in that top target? Kevin's short area explosiveness is pretty uh, pretty elite, pretty unreal. He's a hard guy to cover. You know, you, you probably put him in the inside and, and play off of him, but that won't, that won't do you much good anyways. He's, he'll just run by you. Play him in man, he'll beat you with quickness. Great hands. He's got a, you know, he's, I'm not going to say he's Jalen Waddle, but watching him in seven on seven, there's definitely a hints of Jalen Waddle uh, where it's, you know, if you can't even put a, put a hand on him, how are you going to tackle him when the pads are on? Yeah, it's just a, just a explosive guy. Really great kid, too. Really enjoyed talking to him. Um, you know, he likes the state of Texas. Uh, you know, he's definitely going to come in and visit. And, you know, if they can connect with him, then, you know, there's a chance right now. Uh, I know he's backed off of, of publicly saying that uh, Alabama is his leader, but uh, you know, it doesn't change it. We heard it. And, you know, when I talked to him uh, recently, you know, Alabama was the, the vibe I was getting as well. Uh, but if, if, if Alabama gets Evan Stewart, you know, hang around the rim and, and try to get you uh, Kevin Coleman, you know, Texas, is, I think Texas is going to land one of those lead studs. I'm just not sure who. Yeah, dude, Stewart or Coleman are must gets. We cannot miss there. Are there any wide receivers under the radar that Texas needs to take a look at? Yeah, I really like Nick Anderson for that X, X receiver position. Uh, you know, I'm not alone in that assessment over at Inside Texas. Quite a few of us are high on him. He's, he's a big kid. Very urgent. When you, uh, when you watch guys come off the line, they have purpose. Uh, they, they're either looking to block you. They're looking to get open. They're going to do something on every play. And, you know, you don't see wide receivers always play with the sense of urgency that he has. Uh, you know, probably comes from uh, him just being a football player first. He's got his brother that's a defensive end, brother that was a running back. And he's just a football player. It's, it's, uh, it's sort of a John Grudenism to say that, but it's true. If he played in a more prolific passing offense, he'd be, he'd be uh, more widely known. But just watch him go get open. He's got great short area quickness for a taller guy. Uh, great change of direction for a taller guy. You know, the longer your legs are, the, the harder it is to change directions and the, the slower it happens. But yeah, he's he's a good player, man. He's a really good player. If uh, if, they, if things don't go well with C.J. Williams, you know, I'd, I'd be surprised if Texas didn't offer him. I think he ran a legit four six recently too. Elect, electronic four six at, at six four, you know, 200, 200 pounds is, is pretty impressive. Nice, brother. That's a wrap on wide receivers. So let's not sugarcoat it. Texas simply has to pull some big names this year, correct? Receivers is a huge need need for this class. I, I remember writing an article, uh, what is it, April now? It's uh, 14 months ago about the importance of landing wide receivers uh, and, and you know, still waiting. So, yeah, you've got to take advantage of having all these other parts that are finally in place. You know, you finally got a, a decent offensive line to work with. You've got some capable quarterbacks that can throw it downfield, especially with Hudson Card. you got a running game that's going to be uh, – 
that's going to draw the attention of these defenses. And uh, you got to keep stacking up these wide receivers. You know, the wide receivers are kind of the end user of all these all these other good things happening. They're the beneficiaries of having a good running game, good offensive line, good quarterbacks, and all that. Um, you know, if you're rebuilding a team from scratch, they're not the most important thing. But if you really want to get over the top and you've got everything else in place, you need some wide receivers that can that can go in ball games where you get deep. I think we'll pull it off. So let's recap all of the offense. What is Sark trying to achieve with his offensive recruits this year? We have to set the foundation with the offensive line. Okay, that's the most important part of the offense, anyways. Uh, it's what the class needs. And they need to going back to the last class after only taking two. Um, Texas is in a good chance, good spot to uh, to land some leans. They have to get those leans. It's imperative. Uh, Devon Campbell, Kelvin Banks, one of Connor Robertson, Cole Hudson. Find another tackle. Boom. That's that's going to it's going to guarantee a, a good floor for the class. All right. Then he set the middle with the uh, with the wider receivers. You need some playmakers. Uh, only took two last year, I believe. Uh, and, and they need some difference makers out there. Uh, you know, Sarkeesian's belaboring it. You know, everybody knows how important it is. They got to close some of those guys out. They've got to split aces with uh, with Coleman and, and Evan Stewart. Uh, maybe off for Nick Anderson. And then you know, can you to really uh, set set it off? Uh, you know, if, if it becomes a two quarterback class, then you know it's probably going to be a top five class. Two QB class, you say. All right. So, man, thanks for stopping by again to drop some knowledge on us. I appreciate it. You know, I signed up for your uh, service and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to being a part of that community. Uh, I'll answer some questions uh, when I can. Uh, just tag me in. That's awesome, man. I appreciate that. And thanks for coming out, man. All right, y'all. The Offensive 22 Recruit Preview is in the books, but the 2022 Defensive Recruits video will be coming very, very soon. Watch more of my videos here. And if you like what you saw, then consider joining as a channel member and share this video with fellow Texas fans. And make sure to take advantage of the free premium over on Inside Texas until the spring game. And until next time, hook them.